Hello everyone, I hope you are well. Our video today is the opening session from the recent summer camp held here at Aikido Silverdale in Auckland, New Zealand. Now as the host I had the honour of kicking the event off and I decided to start things off with a, an absolute classic uh, Tonahenka. It's an exercise many clubs around the world use as a warm-up exercise and to start their training. Now you'll see many variations of this exercise but for me as long as the reason why you're doing it and the biomechanics behind it are correct then it doesn't really matter. So I hope you'll find this useful. We just go through the exercise. I try and explain some of the mechanics behind it and uh, I hope even some of you that have been training a while might find some of this useful. Towards the end of the clip I go through four variations that I've seen people commonly do and explain the differences and why or why not they may or not be useful to you. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to smash the like button. It really does help us uh, consider subscribing and enjoy the clip. Um, yeah, cool. So I just want to have a play with um, the Tonahenka. It's one of those things that many Aikido clubs start a session with. And for me, this is a multi-layered thing. It has lots of different benefits. Um, one of the most important things, I think, is the fact that you can leave your day behind. And when you first start doing this as an exercise, it immediately reminds you that you have to move as a complete system. This is no or impossible to do with just an, is you know, an isolated limb. It just feels fundamentally wrong. So it's a really good way of reminding yourself to move as a complete, a complete system. Now, first critical part is my OK. I can't do this exercise. And again, this isn't a fighting thing. This isn't technique. This is an exercise. I can't do this unless he is providing me with what I need. So he's going to have a decent grip. So he's nicely connected. His palm is connected to the back of my wrist at all times, but his arm still rem remains flexible. Now, He's not pushing, he's not pulling. And again, this offers me a neutral space where I can feel the possible points of conflict. So if I start my movement and I go into him, there's resistance. If I start to push or pull, there's resistance. So I've got to use this as a, if you like, a fulcrum that I've got to move around. Now there's many different ways of doing this and if we get time, I'll, I'll show you some variations. Um, all of these variations are the only correct way of doing it, of course. For me, I can't get past this by using strength. So I'm going to have to try and find a position where my centre is passing it, and then this hip can give way, this hip can drive through, and then I can move past. So without that initial iremi, without that initial entrance, I can't hope to do this. If I, if I use strength and extension, I can start to move his arm and I can get past it in a different way. And I'll show you that variation in a minute. But for the basic, I need to be moving in and this alignment is critical. So if I'm facing sideways on, I'm isolating just my shoulder. If I'm facing over here, I'm locking myself up. So the first thing I've got to do from here is align myself through to this point of contact through to my partner's centre. Then I can make my arimi, and I'm exaggerating this. I know there'll be comments saying this is too much, but for me, I've got to get past it. I can't start my turn until I am here. And then it's rotational energy. If I try and do it with, with this, I'm using strength. And at my age, it's just not, not feasible. I want to be the rotator around my own core, this idea of maki, rotational power, and then I can pivot past. And when I'm here, it's simply, making 10k. So have a little go. Make sure there's nothing going into your shoulders and try and make it so that basically all that's happening is I'm going from nicely stacked posture to nicely stacked posture and if he's making contact it takes his balance. Have a go. So uh, just a couple, couple of things. As you turn Keep everything involved, as we said, using the entire body as a system. So it's, it's not just isolating one part, the entire thing. So even if you're doing this, and this arm is kind of 
is not involved. Keep it alive. Because unless there's energy going through your entire body, you can't make that clean, nice turn where everything is extending out nicely. So the second thing is to keep this in front of your centre. Uh, one of my sensations used to talk about putting a chopstick in your, in your belly button and keeping this facing the chopstick as you turn. Yeah. The minute this leaves your centre, you're isolating just the shoulder muscles and you lose the control. I'm not really doing stuff to him. I'm making tin can around him. That's quite a critical aspect of this. Another thing, again, sounds quite strong. If he's holding on with a good, strong grip, starting this turn, it, even if I get my entrance quite, quite good, the back of his hand is going to lock into my forearm, which can cause me to knot up, knot up a bit. So again, if I use my tegatana, all I, all I have to do is just move my hips slightly and I can draw him slightly into his big toe and by creating this shape here, and even someone holding on very tight, you can still move because you've got movement through your fascia. I can just make this shape here. Even if you hold on real yeah. And then you can pick up the hips. Once I've got that, I've opened up a bit of the space and then I can make my arumi. And it's just going through. And as I see there's a, a couple of people dropping right down. I understand this wanted to take the compression and, and but don't give anything away. As you go through, just sit into your posture. Here. And just, just sit into your posture. And it's enough if he's still linked in, if he tries to stand up from there and he's being true to that grip. You know, I'm, you know, he can push me up, but if I'm extending through my posture, it's taking me into his toes, which is taking his balance. And again, it's only an exercise. You're just playing with body mechanics. This isn't martial. So let's have one more go. Have a play, thank you. So over the years, I've seen uh, many versions of this that are all the only correct one, of course. Um, it's an exercise. If you can make this work and it's mechanically correct, then it's correct, it's fine, you know? So I prefer to make this little movement here, open up the space and go through. But I'm old and I'm short and I don't weigh much and I'm not very strong and all those kind of things. Um, there's a sensei in the UK that would go straight underneath like this. Now, if your partner's holding on tight, <coughs> a real decent grip, and he's a bit taller than me, and he would drop and create the space over the top and go into there. And that's absolutely fine. It's a good variation, but it does require you to actually affect this and you are moving it by generating power rather than moving around it. So it's a slightly different approach. You know, and there. I find also that if you're not careful, and the sound's got a decent grip, but you can break off the grip, and once you start to lose the connection, you've got a different feeling of how you're connected through to the floor via their, their feet and their centre. So it's already starting to break out. So. Another one, another sensei, again in the UK, he would expand and make a big circle. Now, I'm, I'm not pushing into him, but his, his shape was much bigger, and he would almost roll this, so it's almost like a deflective shape, so he would be coming in from the outside. So it would be here, and it would go across the body. So a much bigger, expansive shape. And again, you're actually affecting this. You're not leaving it where it is to a certain extent. You're, you're deflecting it. But it's, it's still got merit. I'm doing this with my hand because it's something I've always done, but he basically just flowed around it. So it's another valid way of trying it and the last one which was uh, which was quite interesting if you get someone and again this is almost a variation if something happens if you get someone holding on and being a bit awkward and it's, it's quite restrictive and it, some sometimes people do this without realizing they're doing it you know um, and as you start your movement they'll, they'll kind of follow you because they know subconsciously where you're going to go this one requires you to basically relax completely, make your body movement, and be uh, completely yielding to what they're doing. So if you hold on tight and stop me, stop me doing the tip, that's it. So basically you're, you're flowing around it and you're, you're basically disappearing. 
You're not giving anything to this at all. So as he's holding on, there's the pressure. I can't move him. I'm just going to drop and I'm going to pop underneath. And again, it almost becomes a different exercise. But the principle is the same. I'm ending up in this ten-can situation here. I'm in the safe side and out of a, the way of a strike. And to a certain extent, I've broken his balance. So we've got four variations. The first one, where we're just going straight past... The second one where we're going over the top, which is better if you're a bit taller. The third one with a big expansive movement deflecting around. And then the fourth one, if there's, if there's a solid grip there, dropping underneath, or just disappearing. Have a go. Ashraf. <laughs> 